What is up, ladies and gentlemen? How are you doing this fine Saturday or whenever you're listening to this? You know, I don't dictate whenever. I just I just put it out on Saturdays, you know? Uh, whenever you're listening to this, I hope you're having a good day because you know what? You deserve it because you're listening to this podcast and that means I love you. You know, I don't know if you have, I don't know if you've had anybody say that to you. I love you. And I'm, I truly mean that because you want to know something? If you're watching this right now, that means you're supporting me and you're helping me. And that makes me love you. It's really simple, really simple. Um, today's podcast, uh, we had David Technicolor, 19 year old artist, graphic designer, creator, creative director of his own artist collective called World Nine that he started. Um, he's, he's done like a bunch of different stuff for a bunch of different people. He's mainly a graphic designer. Um, we talked about like just, just creating stuff, you know, as I always do. Cause I just love that. I just love making stuff. And I like talking to be, to people about why they make stuff. We get into like, this is actually like a pretty good conversation. We got into like some deep stuff about like some mistakes that he's made that's helped him, uh, get to where he is. Um, like the inspiration, some different like concepts and ideas about like creativity and not even creativity, just like, like a being a, being a human being. It's very interesting, but, uh, yeah. And I decided to do something a little different with this podcast. So, uh, it's going to be formatted a little different. I think we're just going to test the waters, you know? Um, so what other stuff do we have? Uh, Brock Gardner versus the world, uh, merch is live, I think, and it has been live for about a week. Uh, I don't know how long I'm, I'll let it go. Uh, I might take it down sometime and then, you know, relaunch some stuff later. But uh, yeah, it's actually super sick. So go get some. We got beanies. We got hoodies. We got crew necks. We got t-shirts. We got long sleeve tees. We have just a couple different designs, you know, all done by at on M3 on Instagram. As always, the talented uh, artist that drew uh, all that stuff for me. Um, yeah. So brockgardner.com slash shop is where you can get that stuff. And I'd really appreciate it if you pick it up. If you don't have the money, I really do. It's fine. Like just watch the podcast then. I'm really, I really am not trying to make money. Like I'm, I'm putting it as cheap as I can without like the website telling me I can't put it that cheap because I really just want people to wear my stuff just because I think it looks cool. You know, I just think it looks cool. And I, I bought my own domain, dude. Everything is ready to roll. We went with, I made my own website. We went with a different uh, supplier, not Teespring. So I think the quality is going to be better. Um, yeah, everything just looks uh, way cooler. So brockgardner.com slash shop to go pick that stuff up. Again, also, uh, announcement. I, I stopped doing the Patreon um, because it was getting too cumbersome. I talk about it in this podcast later. But it was like I was putting too much time into trying to do two podcasts and it was two decent podcasts instead of focusing all my efforts on this show uh, to try and make it just as best as I can. So that's what I'm going to do in the future. Uh, We'll just be doing this one free show a week. So if you were going to subscribe to the Patreon, hold on. It'll be back up in the future. But as of right now, it's just not it's I'm not I'm not in a place where I can do that. I don't think Uh, I think I should focus more on just spreading this content and making this as good as possible so that I can succeed. And maybe one day we'll start the Patreon again when I'm in a place that I feel that I can do two shows a week, uh, and not lose any sort of, you know, uh, quality on either of them. So that's the status right now, guys. And, uh, uh, I hope you're having a good day. I hope you're having a wonderful time. Um, so next, so next with this, uh, formatting, I'm going to try and do uh, the intro like this and then five minutes. That's, uh, me talking about a book. Cause I'm starting to read more. Um, so I'm going to do five minutes ish, just a couple minutes of me just talking about kind of what I'm learning, um, from like reading and stuff. Uh, so hopefully you guys can pick it up or maybe, you know, go read whatever I'm reading if you find it interesting. Um, so that'll be next. And then we'll have the interview portion for like I'm, I'm probably going to shoot for like 30 to 40 minutes for the interview. And then I think after we're going to most of the time have me just kind of, I don't know if I'll talk about the interview, but just like a solo 20 minutes where I just kind of talk about whatever. 
Um, so that'll probably be the new structure of the podcast. Hopefully it depends on if you guys like it. So intro book thing, interview solo. So we're kind of switching stuff up. So it's not all the same. So without further ado, here we go to uh, Brock's book corner, which is what I dubbed it. Here we go. All right. What's good guys. I uh, welcome to Brock's book corner. Uh, super corny name. I came up with it about 30 seconds ago when I said we were transitioning into it. Um, I kind of wanted to start this because I made, I made a goal that I was going to read like 20 books this year and I've read like one and a quarter. So I was just like, I, uh, I think it's important to read books, you know, because it helps your mind. You help, it helps you learn a lot of stuff. Um, so I'm just kind of like taking notes as I'm reading these books and then I'll just take those notes and then talk about it here for a couple of minutes. Just like cool stuff I learned, you know? So right now I'm reading this book by Tim Ferriss called, uh, the four hour work week. And basically it's just like outlining, um, how to get rid of a nine to five job. Cause a lot of people, a lot of you guys, I'm sure like people that are listening are scared to get like a nine to five. And like work every day until you can't anymore, until retirement. You know what I'm saying? So this book is supposed to teach you like how to manipulate that so you're working less and making more. You know what I'm saying? And one of the one of the most interesting things that he's said that he's uh, talked about so far is like, um, you should not aim to like, like retirement should be a very like last resort thing, like a backup plan. Like if everything goes south, retirement should be a backup plan. And you should, like, it shouldn't be your main goal. Your main goal should be work. He's brought up this interesting idea where you, you should take many retirements throughout your whole life instead of just one big retirement right at the end. Um, so he's talking about working. Like he said, he works two months and then takes a month off and then works two months and then takes a month off. Cause it's supposed to promote like, uh, uh, like, uh, productivity. So when you're doing those two months, you're just working full on and then you take a month off. It's really the, the main goal of this book is to like try and teach you how to enjoy your life more. It talks about like a lot of people acquire wealth and like are rich at the end of their life, but they worked for the past 30 years doing something they hated to get that wealth. And it's just kind of like, it's posing a lot of good questions. Like, is that worth it? Is it worth it to work your whole life to get that money just right at the end? Or is it more worth it to make a decent amount of money, but actually live and like uh, do stuff you love? Do you know what I'm saying? It's kind of, it's kind of an interesting concept. Uh, I've only read like two chapters of it. I'm starting chapter three today. Um, yeah, but that's kind of what it's talking about so far. So if you're interested in that, it's called the four hour work week. Maybe we can do like a little book club thing. You know, maybe if you're interested, you can get this book and we can like read it together. And then every, every week we'll come back with the chapters we read. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. All right. Um, okay. So now on to the, uh, David Technicolor interview. Peace out. Three, two. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with David Technicolor, also known as DT, also known as Creative Director at World Nine, um, Creative Collective. What would you call it? Creative Collective. I, yeah, it's like a, it's like an artist collective, uh, like slash clothing brand, because hey, there's like the two main facets of it. So yeah. that's how I describe it. If you yeah, so me. we'll definitely get into that later. But right now, I just want to mm -hmm. start. So. This is actually kind of a funny story. So you did the art for Justin Jarzombic and Michael Campion's podcast, Thinking With Both Heads, mm -hmm. right? You did the art for that. And so me and David kind of, um, I've known you for probably like a solid year or maybe a little more. I think so. I think, I think a little bit less because I think it was around March last year. It might have been. Yeah, it actually might have been. Do you I know? Think, I think so. Yeah. Do you remember how we met? I, th I think it was the the group chat on Instagram, right? The, yeah, it was a it was the, a the childish Gambino. Yeah, it was a childish fan Gambino group fan group chat because I followed this childish Gambino fan account, 
and they mm -hmm. were like, yo, slide up to be in this group chat. I got in the group chat and it was just like, it was like probably tw to like 12 or something people. And yeah. we were just all going off about all this stuff that we were making. It was like a bunch of like, they seemed like pretty creative people. Like everybody had like some yeah. creative like thing they were doing. And then you were just like, yeah, I'm trying to start this, uh, like this collective of creators. And I was just like, that's mm -hmm. like, and I was having a similar idea to that. I was like trying to figure out how to do yeah. something like that too. So I was like, yo, I'm doing the same thing. So then we kind of like started mm -hmm. talking and stuff. Um, yeah. So we met probably, yeah, like probably the start of this year or last year, mm -hmm. I mean. And yeah. then I got in contact with Justin through a bunch of stuff. And then he mm -hmm. did, he dropped that podcast that you did the art for. And he posted the yeah. artwork on his uh, story and I slid up because it was dope. I was like, yo, yeah, I was like, you, who you. did this artwork? Because I was, I was like trying to find a new connection because I'm always like looking for new mm -hmm. new people to like come in contact with. So I was like, yo, who did your artwork? And he's like, oh, uh, this guy named at David Technicolor. I was like, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy because yeah. where are you at in yeah, the that world? That was, now? I'm in Orlando. Okay, here's the crazy thing about you because I saw that you were having him on your podcast. Yeah. Um, and I was like, that's wild because I, I work, I made the cover for him, but I actually, me and him went to elementary school together. Seriously? Like, yeah. Between like, oh God, like third and like beginning of eighth grade. Cause then my eighth grade year, I switched schools, but I knew him back then. And I was on, I was like this summer, I was just on TikTok and he comes up on my for you page yeah. and I was like, okay, this is wild. And I check his, uh, his page and I'm like, okay, he's like blowing up. That's crazy. Um, and then I, I hit him up on like Snapchat because I still had him on Snapchat from like eighth grade or whatever. And I was like, yo, I just found you on TikTok. That's crazy. And then we started talking more and I was like, and then you know, as it came up, I was like, if you ever need like any work done, let me know because I do design and stuff now. And then he eventually came to me and was like, this is what I'm, uh, I need this podcast cover. Uh, and I was really, I've never done anything in that style. So I was really happy with how yeah. it turned out. Um, cause I, I thought it looked pretty good. Yeah, it definitely did. It turned out really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's actually weird that I thought it was just like a crazy, it, th there's just more layers to this. I thought it was just a crazy coincidence yeah. that we all, were I, I was like, yeah, I was ready to come on the podcast and be like, you will never believe that <laughs> yeah. I actually know Justin from elementary school. That's crazy. Yeah, I saw man. that you were like, I saw that you were having him on and I was like, that is, that's just such like a wild thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, I knew him back then and then reconnected with him and then you and me met in like a group yeah. chat yeah. and then all three have happened to work together. It's like, and really he's in LA weird. now. So it's like, there's no, that's so, I would have never thought yeah. that something like that would have in the super wild. You know, and I tell a lot of people that I told a lot of people that story cause I thought it was crazy. Nobody else cared. Nobody else gave it. Yeah. Nobody cared. Yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of funny. Um, so let's, let's start with what do you, what would you say you do? Cause do you have a little bio like on your world nine mm -hmm. website and I tried to read it and yeah. it was just like, it listed basically every creative thing that you could possibly try and do. So like try and uh, yeah. sum up what you do. Um, okay. So it, it is kind of like that for me personally, my main one is design now, mm -hmm. um, and visual art in that way. Uh, but I do, I like photography. I haven't done video stuff in forever, but I love video stuff. I do like some painting, you know what I mean? It's like, I, I kind of, other than music, I don't, I've actually not done music at all. Yeah. I don't know anything about music, but I, I kind of try and do all the other creative mediums. Um, but World Nine specifically is like, what I do for that mostly is, you know, visual stuff. And I put it to put out on the account. Um, but the goal for it eventually is to like be able to produce stuff on our own you know what i mean to have like a studio and be like yeah. producing video content for youtube and all that and mm -hmm. like you know making art to put up in galleries and like obviously making the clothes as well um it, it's like a hard thing to describe but like me as an artist i, I do a bunch like just a whole bunch of stuff but design is the main one yeah so you're mainly a graphic designer but you have all these other things mm -hmm. that you're interested in i'm kind of the same yeah, way but I, i'm just not as talented with the other stuff i'm like pretty yeah. decent at podcasting <laughs> i like to do other stuff but yeah i i like I can, I can shoot something pretty okay but when it comes down to like the uh the well, oh my god i just had a complete that's my train of gone when it, when it comes down to more like like the, the post-production, like editing and visual effects and all that, I know 
the bare minimum. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think shooting is definitely where I'm more uh, inclined. Yeah, I, I'm definitely best with graphic design. And that came about just because um, it's like like photo and video, it's like you got to go out and find something to capture, which yeah. is like not always easy. I got Photoshop and Illustrator on my computer. Mm-hmm. I got a day where I'm not doing anything. I could just play around in there and improve that way. So it's just, it's way easier to do design stuff um, like quickly and improve that way as opposed to the other things. So that's why it has ended up becoming my main one. And also like, I love it. I found a love for it like pretty quickly. Yeah. So you talk about, it's just a different, form of media like you don't have to have you don't have to have like a physical thing that you're that you're shooting or something like that Mm -hmm. you just you're just doing it completely it's like completely you're just coming up with something out of your brain you can find something on the internet exactly yeah um but what else other than that what else really draws you to just designing stuff you know what i'm saying um it's it's like i i couldn't even i can't even describe because The way I like to, if I think deeply about it, I like to, all the arts that I do, I like to have like a main reason for each one of like a goal. Mm -hmm. So like with video stuff, it's like telling a story because that's like the whole thing. And then photos, I just want to capture like really just nice images and like capturing moments and emotion. With design, honestly, it like, it comes down to like making something that looks cool. Um, And there's like different different kinds of design. So if I'm doing like a informational flyer or a logo, those are obviously, it's like you have to convey certain things with those. Those are more informative. But with like the art I do and the posters I make, it's just, I want it usually to just look good most of the time. Um, so yeah, that, that's the main driving force. I just want things that look cool and people like looking at. Yeah. What? So when you're trying to like tell a story with one of these posts that you're doing, what do you, what do you mm-hmm. think is the most important part of that? Like, what do you, what are you trying to gain from telling some mm-hmm. some kind of story through your art? Yeah, I mean, it depends. I I just like, I've always liked telling stories like through art. That's been like my main, you know, part of, that's like what draws me to art. That's what draws me to certain music is like storytelling and stuff like that. Um, but it's like a lot of the posters I do or I've done like on my Instagram. It's like I, a lot of them start out where I find a cool stock photo. And then when I'm tweaking, tweaking it and playing around with it, I'm like, oh, okay, this kind of looks like this. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's just like I'm making, you know, worlds in my head. Um, or it's like based on a lyric and I'm like, okay, I have this lyric that I feel like tells a little bit of a story even within it. And I want to convey that through like this image or whatever. Uh, I, have, I have like one of the, it's a guy on like a desert and there's like a, in the sky, like a chrome like statue head. And I'm like, that one just looks like a, you know, that one I liked because it looks like a still, you know, this guy's like exploring and there's like a huge thing, you know, in front of him, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically it yeah. on that. So what went, so when did you start doing graphic design first and what kind of brought you into that world? I started doing it like three or four years ago. It was in my junior year of high school and I, I just had, I got put in a, digital media class and he taught illustrator in that one. And I was like, okay, this is super cool. And I was, I was still trying to start world nine all the way back then. So I was like using the stuff I learned with illustrator to like, you know, start trying to build out that brand. And then my senior year, I was on the yearbook committee. And then for that, um, since between junior and senior year, I'd been working in Photoshop on my own a little bit. I was like, hey, I was the only one who knew Photoshop. So I was, that's where I got a lot of my practice is I was the one who could make more interesting things because I was the only one who had like access to a design program and like knew how to use it. Um, So that's where it kept going. And then since then, I've just kind of, like I said, been doing it like more in my free time and stuff like that. And it's kind of grown from there. Yeah. Um, Are you you planning on doing this for, like a career is this what you want to do for money and everything i mean that'd be awesome the ideal career is um like i guess being like the ideal career is running world nine full-time and being able to like produce content the the way it started is i wanted to create a collective of people of artists so we could all make content together and then put that content out and then 
monetize it, make money off of it, and then take that money right back into making more stuff, like a you know, like a cycle. Yeah. So that that's the goal eventually is to um like is to just you know be self sufficient in making art and content and stuff. And you know, like with World Nine as a brand is probably where I want to go with that. But yeah. if I could get like a a steady job as like a just a designer, I would definitely not be upset about that. Yeah. So with World Line, let's get a little bit into that. It's uh, what? How would mm-hmm. you describe it? Is it like an artist collective, or what would you? What words would you use to describe World Nine? But yeah, um, since it is, it's like I'm always trying to do such like a broad, wildly ambitious things. When people mm-hmm. ask me about it, it's so hard to describe. But I always go with artist collective, media company, and clothing brand. Those are the main three um, bits. Right now, it's been the brand focus primarily um because it's like I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the system i want to use of collaborating with people you know what i mean and like how we want to work with them and how we help them get money and stuff like that but that is a definitely a goal um for it in the future yeah um, it, it's really just about collaboration that's like a really big thing that is important to me where did that concept come from of like you want to just have a a collective of artists that, to just make stuff mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it. I think it just came from the want of like artistic independence um, and like collaboration. Because I love you know working with people, and it's like I, like I said, you know, being able to like get a group of people and we all make stuff, and then we can use those funds to keep making more stuff and keep going. Um, and it's it's always I think maybe not always a lot of the time better working with people on stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like getting different ideas, getting different viewpoints. That's yeah. always. And yeah, you know, it's, it usually brings out a better product as well. I think, mm-hmm. you know, having like multiple viewpoints on certain things. So yeah, yeah. I, I, it came from the want of like independence and collaboration for sure. Yeah. I think that's what makes, uh, you know, Brockhampton. Mm-hmm. I'm oh, sure. yeah. yeah. So I think that's what makes them yeah. so like successful is that they just mm-hmm. have, they just get a bunch of like talented people in a room and then they just make mm-hmm. stuff. They were um, definitely a big inspiration. Yeah. When I was first starting, like 2017, this shirt, I'm mean, this gray shirt I'm wearing under is actually a Brockhampton shirt. Oh, I got seriously? When I went to their show, yeah. That's dope. Um, but no, they were definitely a big inspiration because I started getting into them in like 2017. Um, and at the time, I had a really close friend who did make music and he wanted to do like a similar thing. He wanted to like start a collective. So that's, and then, you know, over time, I had started branching out and doing my own thing. But yeah, yeah them for sure as well. Because that's, that's like such a inspiring story. These dudes are just like met online yeah. and just make like this really, really quality stuff. I'm like, okay, so anyone can do that. And yeah. I'm anyone. So might as well. Yeah, I was thinking about that the other day. They, if I feel like if I, so the story of Brockhampton is they went to a Kanye West forum online. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. he, like Kevin Abstract was just like, yo, if you want to make music, hit me up. And then somehow, mm-hmm. somehow they got so like all these talented people. I feel like if I did try yeah. to do that, it would be like one or two, like people that suck at making music hitting me up. I, I would, I'd be interested yeah. in seeing like where they started. Cause there's no way they just were good. Mm-hmm. And then all came together. There has, there had to be some sort I mean, of process. Yeah. There. I mean, yeah. Um, and their first mixtape was pretty good, but yeah, that was I. I still probably after like some you know growth and improvement. Oh, it was a garbage truck. Um, but yeah, I was thinking about that, like like last week, um, because it's like they were more or less kind of some of the first to do that whole like just meeting people on the internet, and making yeah. a collective, and since then everyone who's like a you know Brockhampton fan and makes music, everyone wants to do the same thing, but it's it's easy to do that once they've done it first but they were like the first you know yeah. it's, hard, it, it's not easy to be the first one so it's like it seems easy to be like oh i could just do this but there's a reason that they stood out is you know what i mean yeah they it's like not, that's not weird, something that just anyone can do yeah they yeah, have yeah, they have a really sure. weird vibe and style they did it all it's all, mm-hmm. it all it all just feels like because it is they're just making it in their house, mm-hmm. like on laptops. Yeah. It feels yeah, very DIY. Era especially. So yeah, good. it feels like really homemade. Yeah. Um, with their their visuals and everything. Yeah. So it just feels really personal and like all their music videos are just them just kind of goofing off. Like there's no Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no really corporate it it feels really authentic instead of like these fake mm-hmm. things. I feel like that's why it resonates yeah. with a lot of people. But 
I feel exactly, like it, yeah, it, yeah. it would also be like, that would also pose a lot of challenges to have a collective like that. Cause it's, it mm -hmm. would be difficult to make decisions. Cause when it's just me, like I'm doing this completely on my own. And if I want to do yeah, something, yeah. I don't have anybody to say no, which is, mm -hmm. it's a blessing and a curse. Cause some things that I want to yeah. do, some things I want to do might be really smart. And some things I want to do are probably stupid. And I need somebody to be it's there. It's not going to work out. And, yeah. Be there, yeah. be there and be like, Hey, don't, don't do that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we'll see how it turns out, but yeah. Have you yeah. ever like had, have you had any experiences like that, either good or bad with running a collective where it's like having a group of people has either stopped creativity I, or helped it? Yeah. Okay. So like I said, the, the world line, since it's, I've been working on it for like three plus years, um, it's gone between, it was like me with an idea and then me and my best friend and then me and four other people, including my at the time girlfriend. And then I realized none of them were like as into it. So then I started doing it on my own again. And then it was me and my best friend and then it's back to just me. So it's like, it, right. As of right now, it's just me doing it. And then I get, you know, my friend's input and like, when I'm like working on something, I'm like, what do you guys think of this getting input like that? Um, but I was, I did like I was saying about the people wanting to, you know, bite Brockhampton's idea in high school, I was in a, like I say, it was like the same thing. It was like a group of dudes who wanted to make music. And I was like the visuals guy. Cause I didn't do music. Um, and, and the, the only thing that I found was difficult about that. It was probably the people themselves um, not to, I realize this is going to be, in the world publicly. I'm not trying to like, you know, like, like slander any of these men. Um, but I think we like, it just ended up cause it was a, a group in Jacksonville who were all like friends in real life. And then me and like a buddy of mine who were, who are not from Jacksonville. And then like some people from other places. Um, and it just ended up kind of being like, like the same four or five dudes would kind of make all the decisions. And there wasn't any like real collaboration going on. That was like my biggest issue. Um, but as far as world nine, the, the problem I end up having is like I said, finding a team to like work with and like, you know what I mean? So I can like delegate stuff and it's not all on me. Yeah. Um, the hardest thing I've found is finding the people to do that and like finding out a way to make that work. So what's been your primary method of like gathering people, just social media? Yeah, basically. Um, yeah, I, I try on the world nine account to, you know, if I see someone like a really cool artist, I like go through like a bunch of their photos, you know, follow them, um, reach out to them, maybe to do like a interview, like an artist profile on the page. Yeah. Uh, or like a lot of the times I just like, you know, DM them and it's like, Hey, I like your stuff. You know what I mean? Just like supporting yeah. art. You know what I mean? And like, yeah, I, I do it on that account because, um, that's the purpose of that one. I obviously follow tons of artists on my main account too, but the, the purpose of world nine is, you know, supporting smaller artists and stuff like that. So I like to use that account to, to yeah. do that kind of stuff. And then I repost on my story for people and stuff like that, if I really like something. So, mm. so you mentioned, uh, just barely that when you, when you first started this collective, it was like you and like a couple people and you mm -hmm. went for a while until you realized they weren't really into it. Um, yeah. were they from like your hometown? So they were from around where they you were, were. Yeah. They were all, I went to school with all of them. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so what I, what I'm go, thinking go is like growing up, there was like lots of kids that wanted to do this type of thing too. Like there was mm -hmm. like in elementary school, I've been doing this for a long time, just like trying to make videos and stuff. Um, yeah. and there was lots of kids that used to be interested in it and we would like make videos all the time. But then once you get to a certain point, you realize that like they aren't really taking it as seriously as you. And there's like nothing against exactly, them because it's yeah. just not for everybody. Mm -hmm. But the, it is kind of mm -hmm. like interesting when you want to do this kind of thing and you get to that point where it's like they kind of, I guess you could say they kind of like grow up and like are like, yeah, this, yeah. Is, this isn't going to yeah, yeah. like happen. And you're just like in that, you know, oblivious, innocent, like, mm -hmm. nah, I can do this. Yeah, um, really optimistic state. Yeah. yeah, you have to be like kind of stupid to want to do like art. You have to be a little bit <laughs> dumb. I'm serious because. Yeah, you know, you, you got to be a little bit oblivious yeah. to like. Yeah. And it, it's, it's like being oblivious, but it's also like, you gotta have that passion. Cause it's like, yeah. it'll, it'll kick you when you're down. And it's like, mm -hmm. you just got to keep pushing through, which is like really hard to do. 
Yeah. Um, but if you like care about it, then, you know, it's something that you end up doing however, however you can. Yeah. You have to be just like so hard headed if you want to do something like this. Cause if you're, for sure, if you're already self-conscious and you post a podcast and it gets like, I don't know, 50 views and you're just like, oh man, we could have done better than that. You start to get in your own head. But me, I post something and I'm like, that was great. I put that out there. That was dope Mm -hmm. because I'm dumb because I'm kind of stupid. So I put that out and I don't (laughs) care. And you have to have that obliviousness and just the. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the thing is it's so hard to not get caught up in the numbers because it's like, you know, everyone's, it's like you're posting everything on your own. It's like on Instagram or on YouTube because you can, Mm -hmm. everyone can make their own stuff. The thing that I found um, more frustrating about it is not, it, it is partially a numbers thing, but it's not as much like, like, oh, I don't have as many likes as this other person. It's that I, when I feel like the effort I put into the art is not, I'm not getting any equal response. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's like I pour like time and all this energy and all these ideas into something to make it look really nice. And it doesn't feel like it's getting appreciated the way. I w- I'm appreciating it or I yeah. want it to be, you know what I mean? yeah, which, I, which I feel is valid. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's definitely hard to not get like discouraged by the numbers. Yeah. It's, it's a little, it's probably the most difficult thing, especially when it's, when you're at the stage in our career where we don't, mm-hmm. we haven't made it yet at all. It's like, yeah, you post something like I, I put a lot of work into this podcast and I'm going to start putting even more work into it this year. Um, Absolutely. but it's like, when I post it and it gets, I probably get like a hundred views on average. And it's like, that's, Mm -hmm. but those hundred people, you know, those people that are supporting you, they're supporting you right now. You got to focus on those people. You know what I'm saying? Well, the thing about that with, with podcasts specifically is that's like really good because, because like the way, you know, the view algorithm works, it's not just like someone clicks and if they leave, that counts as a view. It like counts a watch, watch time. Yeah. And like getting a hundred people to like sit down and listen to your thing for an hour is is definitely impressive. That's not anything. No, yeah, like, I've been know. I've been super blessed with like people that, supporting me here. Mm-hmm. I really yeah, because it's that. like you know the I, not to be like the I, you know sound like an old man, but it's like you know and we don't have like a very long attention span, so it's like no. hard to keep an attention <laughs> no. for a long time. Yeah, I've experienced so, so like, that. I, yeah. Yeah, so like hour long videos getting like I'll I'll go on I remember when um Shane Dawson did his like documentary series and I was baffled because these fifty seven minute long videos had like fifteen million views. Yeah. And I'm like, that's crazy because long form content is not like supported in the YouTube uh-huh. you know, ecosystem anymore or whatever. So yeah, so it is it's definitely impressive getting you know, like triple digit views on something that long. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of funny when I talk to people about my podcast because they tell me they want it shorter. Usually like Mm -hmm. with me, I want pot, I could listen to Joe Rogan for five hours. If he drops a five hour podcast, I can do that. No problem. And then people, I'm like, I'm like usually 45 minutes to an hour and people are like, you Mm -hmm. really should make your podcast shorter. I'm like, what do you want? Like a 10 minute, you want 10 minutes of me talking? That's not a podcast. It's like, that's the thing is, it's, it's a different kind of content. You know what I mean? You're not uh, going to the movie theater for a 20 minute thing. You're going for like a, you're like, this is, yeah. you know what you're getting into when you start it, podcast or mm. long. That's just how it is. You know what I mean? It, and yeah. it depends because I have some people I watch on YouTube where I'm like, I do wish this would be shorter. There's like some stuff that I think they could cut, but those aren't podcasts. Those are just like, you know, it's just like design videos. And I'm like, yeah. okay, you're really talking a lot on one subject, maybe shorten that, but it's, yeah, podcasts are supposed to be an hour long. It's yeah. like the whole appeal of them, I guess. Yeah, it really just depends on the medium because that's why so many people are moving to TikTok. That's why TikTok's exploding. Mm-hmm. And I've noticed, oh, yeah. I've noticed that I'm <laughs> having trouble watching like YouTube videos because I've been on TikTok so much recently. Like I'll be mm-hmm. like, "Why is this longer than thirty seconds?" It's like, it, like yeah, in my brain, I, it's like kind of weird. Yeah, I almost, I, I definitely spend a lot of time on both, but I, I feel like it's almost the opposite for me because um, I like, I grew up on YouTube since mm-hmm. I got like my first laptop. That's just been my main source of entertainment. That's like, like I don't watch TV. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm like really bad at watching TV shows. Like even on Netflix, I'm just bad at that kind of thing. But YouTube, I'm like all on, on board with. Mm-hmm. 
but like I'll watch YouTube for a long time and I'll be like, okay. And then like in my bed and I'm scrolling through TikTok and I just get like, like bored. I'm like, I want to like focus on something for a little bit longer. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, but yeah, I, I also think part of the reason people turn to TikTok is it's the easiest platform to blow up on right now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was going to bring the that hardest, up. The hardest being either Twitter or YouTube, I think would be the hardest yeah. to get a dedicated following on. Yeah, YouTube you, YouTube used to be the place to go to mm-hmm. like make yourself, mm-hmm. but now it's become like the Jimmy Fallon's and the Stephen Colbert's and the like oh my, ESPN's yeah. of the world. That's all that's trending ever. And it's just kind of a joke. Mm-hmm which is fine. Like if that's what you're into, who cares? People like that stuff, but yeah. it used to be the the appeal was that there was creators on there that were just making mm-hmm. stuff on their own and just putting out like good yeah. content. Like I remember like mm-hmm. Corridor Digital. I don't know if you remember them. Bro, oh, <laughs> I, I still watch Corridor Digital. Yeah. I am like fully still following corridor to this day. They're like, that's my favorite YouTube channel actually. That's actually, They're my favorite. I love that. That's sick. But yeah, it was like, 10 yeah. probably 10 years ago plus they were like putting yeah. out like these insane like uh uh video effects videos mm. that were just crazy yeah. and them and like freddie w but like and no one had done that before yeah. so it's like all like us like you know 12 year old boys were like whoa yeah it's crazy explosions bro. and it's just on youtube like that's crazy yeah, yeah. and it's it's like anyone it makes you feel like anyone could do it but now it's you know, I mean, with access to really high quality technology being so easy, everything seems like more out of reach, I guess. Yeah. I mean, not everything, but a lot of the stuff on YouTube can seem out of reach. Yeah. Most of the stuff, if you have like skill, most of the stuff that Hollywood can do, you can do on a lap, not a laptop, but like a computer mm-hmm. with After Effects and stuff, yeah, all like that sort own. of thing. Yeah, you can for do sure. It. it takes a long time, but like, yeah. there's not really some special like a uh, recipe for like Hollywood effects and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It really just all depends well, on your time. Ironically talking about uh, TikTok, it's, I, I realize it's kind of the same because it's like YouTube, you had people filming like just random skit, like sketches and yeah. just stuff in their day. And then you have corridor coming in with all these effects and it's like, whoa, this is like, they're using a better camera. It's a higher quality. They're using all these yeah. effects. That's, a, I think, a similar thing is happening on TikTok. You know, when you see like a video that was like shot on like a DSLR camera with yeah. really good lighting, and you're like, oh, that's crazy. And people are doing like visual effects on there. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's going to be the same thing because on that platform, it's new. Yeah. And well, then eventually, a lot of people are going to, you know, get, learn how to do it and it'll become more of like the norm and be less interesting to people. Yeah. Well, what, what, what I find like a little bit scary and I feel really pretentious saying this, I said it on one of my last podcasts. Um, like mm-hmm. things that scare me is like when Gordon Ramsay has a TikTok, and when mm-hmm. Jimmy Fallon gets a TikTok, then it's just all going to be yeah. Gordon Ramsay, Jimmy Fallon on your for you. And the thing I like about TikTok mm-hmm. so much is it's kids like all around our age, just making stuff in their room. That's yeah. actually funny or like good. Yeah. I don't know. I think, I get what you're saying, but I think that might be different because the thing about the thing about YouTube is it was so broadly accessible. It's like you got you got music videos, you got yeah. videos. It's like to everyone. So you know, more old like people of the older generations above ours yeah. were on YouTube, and then they're like, oh, we can put up these things that people are watching on TV on YouTube. It's all like for them to make money. Yeah. But I feel like. TikTok is such a millennial slash Gen Z primarily kind of app. Yeah. That I, I don't know if, if Jimmy Fallon got a TikTok, if it would take over the app the way he did YouTube. You know what I mean? No, yeah, that definitely makes sense. But it might, I don't know how, how long do you think TikTok's going to last as a platform? Do you think it'll last as long as YouTube? It, who? I mean, last, do you mean like, like it, it's, cause it's like, you know, it is. I don't know if it's its peak, but it is. It's popping. real high there in, yeah. in in popularity right now. I don't think it's going to stay this popular for for that long, but I definitely think it's going to be around because it's like it's like even before Vine got shut down, mm-hmm. a lot of people kind of veered off of that. Yeah. Um, but that had more limitations. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I, I think I think part of the reason why YouTube is uh, lasted so long is because there's like no real limitations i mean other than getting into like the whole copyright issues and stuff but it's like you can i i was just on youtube and in the suggested videos i was watching some guy made a 
a three hour long video about the force awakens and that was part three of like a series Seriously. you could just upload a three hour video yeah. on youtube and it's like tiktok you still got like a minute you yeah. know I mean? so there are still limitations so i don't think it's gonna last as long as youtube but i, I do think there is longevity to it for sure yeah i think it, it, people really like it yeah when you talk about like vine and tiktok i think those are those could, should be considered like like starter apps like that's where people break into the industry and then they move over once mm -hmm. they get like a TikTok following because like we were talking about it's so easy to get like a a small following on TikTok that you can maybe yeah. translate over into YouTube or like film or podcasting mm -hmm. or something like that which exactly, I yeah, yeah. I feel like a lot of people are trying to do like that's what Justin's trying to do again he's mm -hmm. like he's not only on yeah. TikTok he's on YouTube podcasting stand yeah, up yeah. and I feel like the people that are just purely on TikTok only, those are those mm -hmm. people are not the brightest because I don't think that that's gonna sustain that long. But I do think that I think yeah. it'll be around for a while. I don't know because how long has been uh, YouTube been around? Like uh, 10, since two thousand six. So like f what year is it? So like fifteen years almost. Uh, yeah, about yeah. And we're still talking like it's still pretty relevant. It's not as relevant as maybe it's, it was in twenty fourteen. I don't. I don't know, man. I think it, I think like it, I mean, you'd have to look at statistics, but I think generally it like grew and mm -hmm. then got really popping and has stayed roughly at that same level. Like it yeah. hasn't had like a huge fall off, you know, where it's like, yeah, nobody's watching YouTube anymore. I guess um, I'm just going off like my monetizing everything. Yeah. I guess I'm just going off like my own personal experiences. Like I'm not watching I don't watch YouTubers or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I'm either yeah. going podcast or TikTok. Like I never yeah, watch well, YouTube. I mean, sometimes I even watch, like I'll be working on stuff and I'll put a podcast on yeah. in the background, but I'm using YouTube to do it. Yeah, that's a good but point I mean, too. I'll just put like that on. And that, that's like, you know, if people want, if people like the podcast, but say you're working, you know, in, you're like cleaning and yeah. you want to have the podcast playing, but you want a visual, you can just put it up and have the visual aspect of the podcast as well, yeah. which I really like. Yeah. You know, so it's not just audio. Yeah. I, I don't know how long TikTok will, I don't think it'll be around that long. I might, it mm -hmm. might, it might change. It might shift. I'm sure it will because yeah. good companies do that. It'll, it'll change. Mm -hmm. it might be like the next YouTube, maybe. Maybe YouTube will finally yeah, have a yeah, competitor. Could. I could see that happening. It could. Um, yeah, I, people, people spend a lot of time on there for sure. So yeah. I could, I could definitely see that. And there's like such a large active user base. You know what I mean? There's mm -hmm. like, there's a huge user base on YouTube, but it's like how many of them are consistently making content with like a following. You yeah. know what I mean? It, it's interesting. Yeah. It's really interesting how TikTok, like their algorithm works. Cause if I go on Instagram, say I look at Instagram and I look through like everybody I'm following all their posts that they posted mm -hmm. for the day. I'm up to date. I might go on yeah. like two hours later and look again and there might not be a new post. Like there's nothing yeah, new like for me to look at. Things, maybe. TikTok, you go on there for four hours, look through everything on your For You page. You go back yeah. in 30 minutes later. There's just infinite videos on there. People are yeah, constantly tap, making content. You tap the home button again and it has reset. And I was like, all right, here's another four hours of completely different stuff. That's, yeah. that's crazy. You never see they, anything they really, twice. They really nailed that. They really nailed the, uh, like, like for short attention span yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Cause they're like, we're not going to take things that are recent. We're not going to take things that are necessarily all popular or things that are even related to what you follow or like or interact yeah. with. It's just stuff. Yeah. Like a lot of it will be, you know, if I like tons of videos on skating, I'll get skating videos, yeah. but then I'll still get one video that I could never imagine describing or understanding how it got there. I'm yeah. like, what is this? Why <laughs> yeah. is this here? Like I've never seen a Dixie D'Amelio like video I've on my for you, never, Yeah, but for I've some reason seen... I'll get like the fan accounts. I'll get Dixie D'Amelio fan accounts every once in a while. I don't know why. <laughs> I I have Ariana Grande fan accounts on my Instagram <laughs> Explorer page, and I really? don't know why because I've I've never interacted with one. Yeah, they're just like every twenty post is just like like a screenshot of a music video and just like you know like red circles on it. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. I don't. It's I funny. It's funny how those algorithms it's really work. Really confusing. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that I think the the like the key thing with their freaking algorithms and stuff is 
if you notice when you're going down the For You page, it never says a date mm -hmm. or a time when the video was posted. Yep. It could be showing you a video from three months ago. You would have no idea. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. That happens to me because I, I, those, I hate, I hate those, you know, videos broken into a billion parts yeah. for extra views. Yeah. Um, but I am still human. So if I see something that interests me and it's part <laughs> one, yeah. I, I go to the person's page to see if that's their most recent video or mm -hmm. if they, it's old. And sometimes I'm scrolling and that's like a four month old video. And I'm like, oh, yeah. here's the rest of it. And it's then I crazy. watch that and then I go back to my thing. Yeah, it's super long. Yeah, I've had a couple of similar experiences where I watch a video, I click on the page. I'm trying to find the video mm -hmm. again. It's like three or four months old. And if, yeah. and if I didn't look at that, I would have never known. So most of the videos you're mm -hmm. watching are probably old videos. It's yeah, crazy. Exactly. It's super weird. It's really odd how they figured that out. But yeah, you know, but I, I don't think it's like ruined me in my brain for like attention span because mm -hmm. I'll still listen to podcasts and I'll still listen to like audiobooks yeah. and stuff like that. I'm I, I'd say podcasting is probably my number one thing I can.